to Springing Up. This is Sarah Webb, Community Engagement Librarian with the Clark County Public Library. And we are going to discover what's springing up in Springfield and Clark County. Can you guess where we might be exploring today? That's right. We're gonna go see some local community gardens and you'll get to know some amazing organizations that are growing great things right here in your community. Ready? Let's go. Oh, hello everyone. Hello. I'm, hi. 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 <laughs> I am here at the School of Innovation here to talk about um, the gardens here on site. And with me is Lee, James, Jeff, and Joe from SOI. So we're glad to be here today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks. So tell me how the garden got started. It got started about five years ago. Um, trying to improve and make, a, make it attractive. At first it was just flowers. And then we decided to grow some vegetables and that and so the kids could uh, take an active part in that. The, the Venture Club helped uh, dig up the, the ground so we could uh, put plants out there and that. And we sort of got a little grant to go ahead and uh, buy some vegetables and buy the little boxes and put the dirt in and that. So we went out to Lowe's uh, for the first time and got a bunch of supplies and started planting. And it was uh, very attractive to see the vegetables uh, growing that and the kids could also earn community service by going out there and work and they would come sometimes on a Saturday and that and a partnership with uh, Sherry Chin who runs soup and uh, we've got some vegetables also from her besides buying them and that and uh, that's how it got started about Excellent. five years ago. I think go ahead. It might be Garnett Holiday too. Yes, really, she oh, played yes. a real big role. Yes. Uh, you know, she worked for Rocking Horse for us. Just retired, but Garnett Holiday yeah. gave her a big thumbs up. And Deb, what's the Deb, Deb from? from um, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Community partner Deb right. from um, the farm. Oh my god. Farm. Yeah. 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 McCullough. Yeah. Deb, yeah, Deb, Deb McCullough. McCullough. There we go. Yeah, there there we go. She played a big role too. So both of them really. I'm just to be here. Yeah. They really. Have, both those guys have been really played a big role of our garden. Excellent, excellent. And Garden Holiday also had uh, the Ohio State Extension come in, and also, along with Sherry Chin, they also offered fresh vegetables, plants, and that for the families. And through our community partnership, we were able to give out uh, plants and seeds to all the families that were going to school and anybody that was interested. So it worked out well. And we've just been building ever since, you know, just adding some nice little features from time to time as best best we can, you know, just to kind of beautify the, the area. So, uh, and I think we're actually going to also be adding some mulch, uh, you know, kind of mulch the beds a little bit just to kind of clean things up a little bit and, you know, make it a little more presentable and that kind of thing. So, Excellent. we're moving in that direction. And also, Lee has sort of taken over the garden and worked with the garden and with the partnership and that. So she's done a good job in involving the kids. Yeah, I'll let two, her talk. Group, two groups of students in particular. Um, we have the, the Lean Six Sigma class. And these students for their Lean Six Sigma project have started a food pantry here. And they call themselves the Heroes of Hunger. So at the beginning for our first food distribution, we included a lot of the tomatoes and lettuce from the garden. You know, so. Um, we hope to do that next year too. You know, over the summer we'll we'll probably have a lot of tomatoes and things like that, and the students will be able to give out fresh produce in addition to what we have from Second Harvest Food Bank. Wonderful, wonderful! Wow, this is a really active garden. A lot, a lot happening here, and I think it's wonderful that the students are getting involved. That's fantastic. So what are some of the new features um, that you're adding this year to the garden? Um, one thing, we've, we're trying different types of vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, students don't really like broccoli. And, and I'm, I hope, you know, with um, the help of the nutritionist, we talk, I talked yeah. about this to Ms. Uh, Kirkendall. Kirkendall. Um, you know, she, wants, she would like to get students introduced to new vegetables, like beets. We're growing beets, you know, 
know, they're, they're used to just tomatoes. So we're gonna have um, later on when it gets, it's almost getting to the point where it's warm enough to plant things like bell peppers, and things like that. So we're gonna go in that direction, but uh, yeah. There was Lee talking about, we have a partnership with Central State Extension University and uh, Donna Kirkendall, she come in and work with our students, our nutrition education program. Kids actually, actually participate in cooking uh, different meals. So hopefully we can use some of the fresh products from our garden next year's class. And get them to think about different things, you know. Um, we, we also have a lot of herbs too that they can add. So instead of, she taught a class uh, just a few weeks ago, teaching the kids, you don't need to add things like hamburger helper to, to meal. You can spice it yourself and reduce sodium and have something really flavorful. So we hope to introduce kids to new things, to broaden their horizons. And, and in addition, you know, I guess excite their taste buds as well as get their little hands involved. So we have too many kids who are afraid of dirt. You know, it's like, no, it's called soil. It's essential. <laughs> and I think a lot of kids will take some of the plants home and start their own little garden and grow some, you know, tomatoes and have those at a home so they'll learn there are fresh uh, vegetables available. And I think, too, because, you know, we are an urban, you know, school, you know, a lot of these kids, they don't have that connection with, you know, those kinds of experiences a lot of times, you know, like a, a rural setting would. And I think that their connection with that, you know, is pretty important. And I'm glad that we at least have that available to them, so. That's wonderful. So being here in this location and with the garden program moving forward, what are the biggest challenges that you face? Well, getting kids out there from time to time to work on it when we're trying to do curriculum, you know? Um, but, uh, you know, of course, you're dealing with the elements and those kinds of things as well, as usual. Um, just making sure that it's tended to, you know, properly. And especially during the summer months and that, you know, making sure somebody's out there weeding it and water. And uh, custodians also helps. Paul, oh, like that. Yeah. And Paul Taylor, throw a shout out to him. Definitely. Yes. What are some of the uh, benefits, unexpected benefits from the garden? There are nesting birds out there, yes. and we go out there and watch them sometimes. Mm, I took my biology nice. students out there, and they were talking loudly. I was like, no, 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 let's pay attention. You know, and just that something uh, students don't get a lot, that time to quietly observe nature. You know? yeah. and, and that's not part of any curriculum, but it's something essential to, to truly understanding a content like biology. You know, you observe. You learn from observing. Absolutely. I know Bruno, I'm not going to say, he might not say anything, but his art class also goes out. And just I try that quietness and stuff, I probably don't think it helps. Yeah, it's good to be outside doing work, you know, it's important and we don't get enough of that. So this is, we just want to take advantage of the courtyard we have and make use of it in a meaningful way for, you know, educational purposes. And it's nice to marry that art with nature and kind of beautify in more than one way, yeah. uh, which is, which is awesome. So um, looking toward the future, what does victory look like to you in terms of the garden moving forward? I would like students to learn what it takes to take care of plants and, and perhaps start gardens of their own. You know, that's, that's the whole thing. You know, we, need to, we need to be careful. We need to take care of um, our resources and, and our bodies are and the, probably the most important resource we have. Um, we need to learn what we're putting into our bodies. We need to learn how to, how to um, just take care of, of ourselves. I just, I would like this, to see the students know what they're eating, basically. And That's the end goal. The end goal, know what you're eating, let it be healthy food that goes inside. And, and you know, grow your own food, try it. It might be a container. You know, it might be herbs on your windowsill, but everybody is able to grow something. 
And I think even beyond just the, the fact that it's organic, it's healthy, mm -hmm. it's the fact that they did it themselves, mm, you know, and there's, there's a lot of pride that goes into, you know, having your own garden and eating your own foods and those kinds of things, which can't be missed, so. Yeah, absolutely. So many benefits that we don't even yes. realize. How can the community come and support the School of Innovation? What group supports you? The Sherry, uh, the Sherry, yes. Uh, the soup supports us, and then we have some community partners. I know uh, the year before COVID hit and all that, we had our community partners come through and go through uh, the community garden out there, and they were able to pick some fresh vegetables, and they were also given plants, the opportunity to take plants home, vegetables and that, uh, tomatoes, peppers, and uh, cabbage, and greens, and you know, they chose what they wanted, and they, you know, took little plants, planters home. And we um, we also have a connection with the soup kitchen in Springfield. Wonderful. Um, I, I've worked with them for several years for the Bulls for Life project, which uh, I would love for them to be able to come. And of course, COVID has been such a problem for all of us, obviously. Um, so we haven't had that connection that we've had for two years now. But I would love for them to be able to come and you know select uh, vegetables and actually use those vegetables in their soups and whatever food they're creating because they actually do more than just soup, by the way. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, yeah, so we have many options available to us moving forward, and we would just love to take advantage of it if it's made available to us. So. And I made a phone call to the Ohio University, uh, or Ohio State University Extension here in Clark County, and they had a lot of seeds that they did not give away when they had the Victory Garden giveaway, and I got a bag of seeds, so we planted Great. some of those That's that wonderful. you saw earlier. Great. It's beautiful to see the community come together to, oh, yes. to support your work here. It's, it's amazing. So, Well, thank you, Lee and James and Joe and Jeb, for having me out here today to talk about all the amazing work you're doing here at the gardens at the School of Innovation. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Wow. There is so much inspiring work happening at these community gardens. Here's a sampling of blooming books at your library to help keep your inspiration growing.
If you have any questions about what we share today, feel free to shoot me an email at sweb at ccplohio.org. Also, don't forget to check the library's website to see more of our original online programs just like this one. Thanks for watching. See you next time.